And hello, welcome back to our turbulence modeling videos. We are continuing our derivation of the K epsilon model, and I mean, we're trying to see, we're trying to compare this epsilon equation to this omega equation and see what the differences are. Okay, so we have stopped over here, and we find that okay, there are like two new terms that pop up. Okay, so one is this one over here, and one is this one over here. And it looks like these two are actually pretty identical. If you, if you take a look at it. Huh? Okay, again, I think there's a typo here. I made a typo here. I forgot to uh, get rid of this i. It should be a j there. Yeah. Anyhow. Anywho. Uh, yeah, the, anything else to correct? xj, xj, ah, yes, this one is the one. Yeah, forgot to... Okay, so that's why the error was there. I copy and pasted it wrongly, but okay. You can see this term and this term is pretty, they're pretty much the same term. So for the sake of neatness, I'll just contract them. So we're almost there. Not quite there yet, almost there. So there's a two times this viscosity and then there's this divergence term, okay? Um, there's a summation, summation over x, y, and z uh, in the three dimensions, and then there's this uh, turbulence thingy here. Okay, um, yep. And then we also have this, this thing here, this uh, k-looking thing, all right, uh, from the k equation. So we can ta kind of take a look at our k equation over here, and then we just uh, copy and paste it uh, back there. And I will just uh, copy and paste this here. Okay, I'll say from our k equation, we know that this whole term here, is actually just equals to this, yeah. So it's the epsilon over there. So I can just uh, do that very simply and get this. Okay. All right. So that makes things a lot easier. Okay. So this there will be a production term here, which I'll just rename as P. Then the the epsilon is actually the destruction term. So I'll just name this as epsilon. Okay, so I can combine these two terms together because they have the same thing. So uh, I'll subtract omega p from both sides. So I will get this. And I'll add omega epsilon to both sides where I'll get this. Okay, so I'll get rid of this. Okay, and I will want to factorize p out to make things neater as usual always try to make things neater mm -hmm. in the business of tidying things up there we go and you get the epsilon out as well and now replace this with one okay so uh, this this becomes some of the model coefficient over here. All right, and then this this kind of extra term pops up here, and then this this one is uh, it starts is starting to look a little bit like this now. So the final step is to divide I guess throughout by k. So I need to divide throughout by k. So I have a two over k here, and omega over k here. All right, and I'll get out of this box thingy over here. All right, and almost there. And uh, we remember, we remember uh, epsilon. Okay, equals to, or rather omega is equivalent to uh, epsilon divided by k. 
no problem there. Uh, I'll just substitute epsilon equals to omega k. So let's do epsilon equals to omega k. Omega k. And then we can just uh, copy and paste this in. And this one here. And this one here. All right. And very simply, we just get a omega square over here. And an omega k, omega over k term here. All right. Uh, we are almost done. Uh, pretty much, we are we are kind of done already. So I'll just uh, get this, get this to this side, just to have it consistent with the way it is being written. So this is what we have here. However, this one is written, of course, in the really, really funny way. This one where omega is defined as such. It's uh, there's some beta term there, beta star term. Uh, so we'll have to make some adjustments. Okay, but this is what what we have. Okay. This is the omega equation we derived from the k epsilon model. Okay, so now now we have this this equation we can directly compare the, the similarities and differences. So uh, I will just highlight some of the terms. This one I can put in cyan, this one I can put in green. That's all. Because uh, the, these few terms, if you see, these are, these are pretty similar. Okay? Um, so I'm going to copy this over. Let's copy from CFD online. Okay. Uh, omega partial t equals to plus u. I'll just use all the terms that they are using. Okay. So this is the terms that they are using. I will just uh, type accordingly. Uh, we'll have an alpha, omega divided by k. Then uh, we will have tau ag. Okay. Partial ui xj ui partial xj all right and we'll have a minus beta omega square all right uh, then we'll have this uh, transport term which is uh, delta by partial by partial xj And we'll have this inside new plus sigma new t. Okay, partial omega partial xj. Okay, so just for direct comparison purposes, I can just shift this in front. All right, and there we go. Now, uh, immediately we can see these two terms are the same. This one will be the same as this. I mean, the, the way we write i and j is kind of different, but uh, to me it doesn't really matter. They both represent the convective term and the total derivative term. So uh, the left-hand side is kind of dealt with. No need to worry. Okay, so next, next thing is for the diffusion term. If one over sigma e one over sigma var epsilon in the k epsilon model equals to sigma in the in the k omega model, then this term will be equivalent to this term. And then there are two more terms here. Okay. Oh right. I think I forgot something. Uh, I wanted to get rid of uh, get rid of this beta plus so anyways so this this should be called omega star so 
so let's let's me let me do that first omega star all the way through and then then we can start comparing omega star and then we have omega star squared all right let's change change omega star star to omega using uh, this uh, omega star omega star equals to epsilon over k is epsilon over k over beta star so epsilon divide by k then you have a beta star so I have a beta star here all right it's so a beta star k so that is basically equals to 1 over beta star uh, omega this is the omega that we used to so we just substitute there shouldn't be too much of trouble much too shouldn't be too much trouble so this just should just be omega I just copy and paste because I don't want to type that out uh -huh. and here as well and then here as well so so it'll come here of course I can just bring in the constant out it doesn't really matter and then this one this one here will be just as so omega 1 over beta and the last one is where it gets a little more tricky a little bit more tricky because there's a square but that's all we have to do okay it's a less intimidating than I thought at least uh, not too many issues then we multiply throughout by beta star so this one out this one out this one out out and so 1 over beta star so it just so happens that having this having omega uh, kind of defined differently you just have a different different constant for this one this omega square term okay so this is just another constant now okay for the diffusion term if this 1 over sigma epsilon equals to this sigma over here okay 1 over sigma epsilon is this one all right if it's equals to this sigma over here then we the models are the same okay so the, the convection side is the same and if you equate the constant then this side is the same uh, then you'll have these two terms left so this one is like the production of omega so we have production of uh, omega here inside the k omega model and from the k epsilon model that we try and change all the terms into omega we have this term okay okay from k epsilon model model we have this so what we have it's uh, tau ij is this one is actually just equals to p we discussed that before to make sure the uh, make sure the models in the, the turbulent kinetic energy are exactly the same and then we have the omega k term over here and then we have, have one more alpha so alpha uh, equals to c uh, epsilon 1 minus 1 so if we have these conditions the so that, that means I'm just comparing these two okay I'll just switch this around uh, just that easier to see okay if alpha equals to this c uh, epsilon 1 minus 1 
and then this this p is equals to this tau ij partial ui partial xj then we have uh, the production the production term of omega of omega is the same okay so we have this this uh, c is c e c epsilon 1 minus 1 so what is c epsilon 1 c epsilon 1 is 1.44 in the model okay c bar epsilon 1 equals to 1.44 so alpha equals to 1 minus 1 or oh, 1.44 minus 1 equals 0 0.44 and from uh, k omega we get this alpha equals to what alpha equals to 5 over 9 okay so it's not exactly the same because i think okay this one just leave it equal to 5 over 9 and that's 0 0.55 okay it's not exactly 0 0.44 but it's pretty close i mean uh, yeah if we if we force them to be the same then these models will be the same uh, other than you know some uh, empirical constant and then the other term of comparison is to compare this uh, omega square term so we have this term which is the destruction term we compare the destruction term for omega so from from k epsilon It is this, so omega square into some constant, and then from the k omega model we have this. All right, just ignore that. I'll get back to you that in a bit. K omega. It is this. So if beta divided by beta star equals to C epsilon 2 plus 1. So is that plus 1 or minus 1? I think my, I might have made a mistake. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, I made a mistake there. Uh, it should be a minus sign. Okay, so this should be a minus one. All right, so right, yes. Uh, so if those are equal, then the destruction term is the same as well. Uh, so beta over beta star from the k omega model, beta divided by beta star is the following. Uh, beta over beta star so 3 over 40 over 9 over 100 equals to 3 divided by 40 divided by 9 divided by 100 so 0 0.83333 and if we look at the k epsilon model um, okay c2e is this is this uh, one where we have this destruction term here um yeah it is about 1.92 all right 1.92 or c epsilon 2 is 1.92 equals 1.92 so if we have the minus one on both sides and then we'll get 0 0.92 close but not i mean it's close enough but i mean it's just how you want to adjust the empirical constants. If you force them to be the same, then sure, the, the models are actually the same. Just like if you force these constants to be the same. But these are the default values. You don't have to use them all the time. You can adjust them according to your flow situation. Now, uh, the special term that pops out, the special term that pops out is this term from K epsilon model. Okay. From k epsilon model 
model and additional destruction term for epsilon pops up okay so this is the term okay so it is a destruction term for epsilon okay uh, so if this quantity increases epsilon will decrease so k epsilon has a additional like destruction term for epsilon maybe you say that uh, you'll probably if this term is positive anyway they will have more kinetic energy uh, turbulent kinetic energy all around and so this extra term pops out okay and if you take a look at this uh, this um, yeah uh, excerpt from uh, Stefan B. Pott's book say how does the k omega model based on this equation differ from the k epsilon model when we when I'm going to answer is to derive the omega equation from the k epsilon model which is just what we've been doing and you see that again this this term pops out okay there is some constant over there and yeah it is a constant over here and then you have the the apparent turbulent viscosity uh, okay this is the apparent viscosity of course remember we ignore this part in the bulk flow because this one is much greater than this okay so there's a 2 and a k in front and then the divergence term is over here okay so there's this extra thing that comes out which uh, makes the k omega model um, uh, uh, which is the main thing the main feature that differentiates k omega from k epsilon is this term here in the omega equation and of course uh, the models perform differently for different flow types but yeah that's that's uh, what I wanted to show we derived how this term actually came about and yeah hopefully that uh, clarifies what what the difference is between uh, k omega and k epsilon uh, at least in terms of the model and in the next video we want to discuss more about the k omega sst model uh, shear stress transport which is the blend between k epsilon and k uh, omega so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time bye bye